Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as our chairman say, my name is Ana Serdan, and I come. Oh, I should put this. Uh, I come from Universidad Veracruzana in Mexico, and what I'm going to present to you today is part of my research as uh, for the PhD at the Institute of Biotechnology and Applied Ecology. First of all, I would like to start talking to you about lignocellulosic substrates. Basically, all the plants are composed of lignocellulose, but when we are talking about second generation biorefineries, we specifically refer to plant residues. Uh, what's, what I should use to point? We, we refer to plant residues and no feed plants. These vegetable materials with no, with no added value can be transformed onto biochemicals, bioproducts, and biofuels by converting the polymers that compose the plant cell wall. These polymers are called cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. Cellulose and hemicellulose are composed by different kinds of sugars that can be transformed onto the bioproducts we are interested in. And, but to access these two polymers, we need to break the lignin barrier. Lignin function in nature is to protect the polymers, but when we, are, when we want to use the sugars contained on these polymers, we need to degrade lignin first. In order to degrade lignin, several pretreatment methods have been developed. There are physical or chemical pretreatments, but I'm going to focus on the biological pretreatments. Biological pretreatments um, profit the natural ability of some microorganisms to degrade lignin. There are two ways to perform a biological pretreatment. One of them is to grow the microorganisms direct over the, directly over the substrate, or we can take the enzymes, the ligninolytic enzymes that the microorganisms produce, and use those enzymes over the substrate to degrade the lignin. Some of the ligninolytic enzymes are lacases, manganese peroxidases, and lignin peroxidases. My work focuses on the use of lacases. Lacases are enzymes, oxidative enzymes, found in many different kinds of organisms. But the ones used for lignocellulose degradation are fungal and bacterial lacases. One advantage of lacases is that they oxidize many different kinds of phenolics and non-phenolic substrates by reducing oxygen to water. Then we don't have a contaminant or hazardous bioproduct de derived from the oxidation reaction. This is why lacases have become, of, uh, uh, have become very important in biotechnology and they have found application in many different kinds of industries. But my work focuses on the degradation of lignin by lacas to, in order to produce biofuels. When we are going to use an enzyme uh, for biotechnology, we have two ways to produce the enzyme. One of them is to grow, to grow the producing organism in solid or liquid culture, and from this culture, we extract, ext extract and purify the enzyme of interest. These enzymes are called native enzymes. Another way is to take the DNA or the RNA from the producing organism. We isolate the gene that codifies for the enzyme we are interested in, and that gene we introduce or clone it into an expression organism. This, the enzymes that produce that are produced in this way are called recombinant enzymes. What I did was to search for uh, papers that reported the lignin degradation by using lacases. And I wanted to compare 
the results obtained with native and with recombinant lacases. First of all, we found a big difference amount, uh, in the amount of uh, reports with the, these two kinds of enzymes. There are, we found 31 reports on native enzyme and only 10 reports about recombinant enzymes. About the substrates that uh, this author utilized, the most common is the wheat straw. We found eight reports. We also found, found five reports about uh, different parts of the sugar cane uh, that are residu residues of the sugar producing process. And we've also found some with rice straw. About the producing organisms, the organisms that we take the enzymes for, the most common are white rot fungi, uh, Pleurotus, Trametes, and Pycnoporus were the most used ones. There are also some reports about bacterial lacases used to the great lignin, but we only found 11 works, 11 works that use bacterial lacases. Regarding the pretreatment conditions, we found that um, the authors report very different conditions to pretreat or, the, or degrade the lignin by using lacases. The temperature range from 28 to 65 degrees Celsius degrees, and the pH go from 2 to 9. Uh, also, the enzyme doses were very different. The lowest we found was only 0 0.2 units of lacas per gram of substrates, but the highest one was 5,600 units of lacas per gram. The results obtained are also very different. Some authors report, report negative values on lignin degradation. That means that the that at the end of the pretreatment, they have more lignin than at the beginning. So these authors obtain the opposite of what they wanted. But there are also good results about lignin degradation. Some of them reach 80% of degradation. Then we select some of these reports. Uh, we, we reduce or to the ones that use less than 100 units per gram of substrate, and we put them in this graph. In this axis, we can see the lacus concentration, and here we can see the reduction in the amount of lignin they achieve. By looking at this graph, we can conclude some things, and others are not so conclusive, I'm going to tell you right now. First, we can see that the negative values were all obtained with native lacases. Native lacases are the, the blue dots and recombinant are the green ones. So the, ne uh, the negative la values on lignin reduction were obtained when using native lacases. Recombinant lacases, some of them obtained zero, so no lignin degradation, but the others are positive values. Another important thing to notice is that uh, almost for, for uh, all the groups, the green dots are always in the, in, in the top. So it could seem that recombinant lacases give better results, but it's not conclusive because as you can see, there are green and blue dots all over the graph. So um, there, there is no consistency or we could, couldn't say for sure that recombinant are better or native are better. But something else that results interesting here is that the highest values obtained were with low enzyme doses. Those, these four works utilize doses of 10 units or less of lacus per, per gram of substrate. Which, mean, which could be explained by the fact that if I put more enzyme, some, a part of these enzymes degrade the lignin, but another part starts promoting a polymerization reaction. So I'm degrading, but I'm also producing more lacus because lacus enzyme can do both works. So there is more research needed, but probably 
this is happening here. And that's why this works with higher lacus doses uh, report less degradation of lignin than the ones that use it only, este, lo, only low amounts. And another important fact, this, uh, all these works are listed here from the ones that obtain the lower lignin reduction to the ones that obtain the highest lignin reduction. And another important point is the use of mediators. As you can see, the ones that obtain higher reductions, almost all of them utilize, utilize mediators. The mediators have the function to, um, they have a smaller size than the enzyme, so they can go deeper into the lignocellulosic matrix. If we use the lacus alone, it might not enter all the parts of the, of the matrix, and thus the degradation is lower. So, what are our conclusions? We confirm by looking at these, report, uh, at these reports that LACAS can degrade lignin and that mediators enhance lignin degradation when using LACAS. We seem to have discovered <laughs> that low, do, low LACAS doses give higher delignification de but there is not a clear difference between native and recombinant lacas. In general, we could say that more investigation is needed, especially with the use of recombinant enzymes to degrade lignocellulose. We found uh, uh, several reports on the production of recombinant lacases, but only a few of them use the lacases to degrade lignocellulose. Finally, I would like to thank the institutions that gave the economical support for me to come to the 77, this is Cobesidet and Universidad Veracruzana. But I would like also like to thank the institution that gave the logistical support for me to come and they stay at home taking care of my kids. So I would like to thank my family. <laughs> and thank you all for your attention.